Welcome, Jamie Hartley here from Crossfader and in this six part tutorial series on Serato Studio, today's lesson is all about creating a DJ mashup or DJ remix. We're going to be layering in Serato Studio multiple audio sources together. It's a very common thing for DJs to create mashups live by adding say an acapella over an instrumental and doing something creative with hot cues potentially by cutting it up, but you're doing all of that live in a set. And if you only have two decks, you've already used up your capacity to then mix out to the next song. So using a tool like Serato Studio to build out your ideas and create DJ mashups and remixes is really, really useful. In today's tutorial, we're going to be using the full version of Serato Studio. Now, if you don't have the full paid version yet, then just click the link in the description, enter the code CROSSFADER, and you'll get two months free of Serato Studio. And you can follow along really easily with this tutorial. To start with, we're going to be layering multiple audio sources together in Serato Studio and tweaking them to make sure that we're building up this initial project. In the next two videos, we're going to be really adding to that using effects, automations, um, really working with the full potential of Serato Studio and the scenes that are available to us. But for now, let's build that initial project, work on some multiple audio sources and look at how to sample elements of songs and acapellas into a remix. For this lesson in the Serato Studio tutorial series, we're going to be looking at making a new DJ edit still. However, this is the paid version of Serato Studio. So the reason why we're using the paid version now is we want to work with multiple audio sources and access some of the other features that the paid version of Serato Studio offers to us. So first of all, let's click on new DJ edit. Now a common thing for a lot of DJs is to create DJ mashups. That's where you would potentially layer some um, instrumental and acapella together to create a unique blend and a unique mashup. And you could do that live on your DJ equipment. However, with Serato Studio, you can do way more than just play an acapella over an instrumental. You can cut it up. You can make sure it's perfectly in time. You can add effects to it and all sorts more. So we're going to be looking at multiple audio sources here in this lesson. Before we move on in future lessons to cleaning it up, we're going to make it sound really smooth and really neat. But this lesson is all about building up the audio together and creating a mashup with different pieces of audio. So first of all, I've got Jay Robinson, the model, which is a sort of tech house track here. All I'm going to do is drag it onto the audio panel to bring it into Serato Studio. You'll notice the BPM of my project and the key has changed to match Jay Robinson, the model. And then... All I want to do is make sure that I've got the track playing at the bottom and as standard, it's done that. I'm not going to change anything about Jay Robinson, the model, so I don't need to set things like an endless slicer or a slicer and juggle the track around. You could do that at this point and make a shorter version or you could reposition parts of the song. However, what I'm more bothered about is adding other audio over the top of this. There is a lot of room in this song to be playful and to add things like acapellas and even other samples. So the next step, which we couldn't do until this point, if you've been following this series, is being able to add a second audio track. And all we do is click this button here and it adds a second audio track. Let's go back to our library. And the audio track that I want to load in is Valentino Khan, Lick It Acapella. Take it, hold it, There's some really good sort of vocal one shots in here and vocal parts that we can simply layer over the top of the other track. So first of all, let's go back to song view. Now you can see we've got two different audio files and I'm just going to drag this panel up from this point so we can see a bit more what's going on. Now that we're building out the uh, song view by adding more tracks in here, we want to be able to see what's going on. So that's the first thing. The next thing is I want to set up a slicer this time, not an endless slicer, because I want to pull sections of this track down and layer it over the instrumental. So if I just hit set slicer on 32 beats, let's see where it puts those slices. Let's have a preview. Take it, hold it, pass it down. That's cool. Lick it, lick it down, a more down, repetitive lick version. Lick it, lick it down, down. Similar to the last one. Lick it. This one's got some space in between, so this is quite nice. A really nice cut with the vocal. Similar to clip one. Ah, and then we've got a build-up as well, a build-up vocal. So there's lots of different elements here when it comes to the vocal where we can take different parts and just simply layer them over our instrumental. So first of all, I'm going to delete clip one 
out of the second audio track here, so it's empty. I'm going to zoom out so I can see a bit more the entirety of the original song that I want to layer these vocals over. And then it's as simple as thinking, how much energy energy do I want to add to the different sections of the song? So clip four here where there's space like it. might be great to add over just the intro because I don't want loads of vocal in my intro when I'm mixing this track in in a DJ set. So I simply just drag it down and let's put it over this where the drums come in a bit stronger. Let's preview. You can hear them both playing together. And it's as simple as that. We've dragged that down and it's a good length. Do we need to drag it again? So I could drag that down again to double the length of it. And then it leads into the first break. Great, so there's some space here to add some vocal chops, which is what I want to do over this um, breakdown. But we'll come to that in a minute. We've got some other audio clips here of the acapella that I want to work with first. So again, let's listen to the build up. And I just skip through listening to different sections of the song. So maybe for this section where the drums are getting more repetitive, we want the build-up of the vocal, which is it clip seven. There we go. And this might fit really nicely over this build-up. So let's have a listen together. Just place that slightly wrong. Let's bring it there. And then it drops in. Nice. So again, thinking about what I've got in the acapella and what I can do to um, add to the buildup of this instrumental song. Then we could simply duplicate this. We could press the option button, or I think it might be alt on a Windows machine, and just do it to the second breakdown as, and build up as well. <laughs> And that sounds good. Okay, next I may want to add some little vocal samples from the Lick It. Take it, hold it, pass it down. So this is the main part of the vocal. I might want to add some of this into the main section of the song. So let's say it drops in. I don't want the vocals to be there in the builder. And then straight away again in the drop, I want the drop to have an impact without vocal. So I might let the drop happen. But I can imagine at the end of each little phrase, we could have it coming in with the lick it, lick it, down, down for that end section. So if I zoom in, and what I want to do is try and find the slicer that says lick it, lick it, down, down. Lick it, lick it, down, down. There we go, clip lick. two. And I just want to drag it down. I might have to reposition this. Lick it, lick it, lick it, down, down. Lick it, lick it, down, down. So yeah, let's count along. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four. And then we want it on this next bar here. Lick it, lick it down, down. Now the next thing is we don't want this to continue playing. So you can truncate this clip and shorten it by just dragging on the end, and shortening it down. Now let's have a listen. Again, let's duplicate this and drag it further on to this section. It works well just pausing and then copying it across. Again, we'll need another one there. So two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, and that's the next section. 
Now there is a bit of a break in the original. So I'm not going to add the Lick It Lick It down there because there's a bit of a vocal sample in the original song. But now we're coming to the second half of this main drop. I might want to just add in the actual Lick It sample and we could see what that sounds like. And it's as simple as just dragging and dropping these blocks and really experimenting with what you have and what it's already laid out for you. Really intuitive, really easy. That. Make sure we're on beat. Not like that. Take it, hold it, pass it down. Let it, lick it, pull it down. Take it, hold it, pass it down. Let it, lick it, pull, pull it down. Again, if I want to duplicate it. Take it, hold it, pass it down. Let it, lick it, pull it down. Take it, hold it. Make sure you listen right to the end because I might truncate the end of this. Lick it, pull, pull it down. No, I quite like it. I'm going to leave it like that. So straight away, we've now got a structure over the main drop. And it's as simple as I could highlight all of this. And I could just hold my option key or the alt key on Windows and just drag it and put it over the next section again for the back end of the song. Let's just check we're in the right time. Obviously, just test before you export anything that it sounds okay that... Um, you're not suddenly layering vocal over vocal because there's a hidden vocal towards the end of the song or anything like that. Always check what you're doing. Let's listen to how this main vocal comes back in. That sounds good. Let's skip through. And then it's totally personal preference. You could leave a, a really basic drum outro or you could just sample in clip four again for the end because we're coming towards the outro and the track's naturally breaking down. Let's listen. Down. Sounds good. I'm going to get rid of it at the end. So we've just got bare drums leading into the end of the song. And there, straight away, we've created, you know, doing all of this and jumping around to these different sections of the acapella live as a DJ throughout this entire song. It wouldn't be possible because once you get towards the last drop, you might want to be thinking about mixing your next song in. So all of these cuts that we've made at the end you know, you'd have to give up on if you were just going to load another song and mix and continue mixing. So by doing stuff like this in Serato Studio, you can really make your sets unique and enhance them. Now, it doesn't have to stop there. I like that we've got a vocal over an instrumental, but we can take it a step further. I'm going to add another audio track because I want to add a little recognizable dance sample in there. So click audio track. Again, we've got third audio track here. Go back to library. And I'm going to add in a bit of Armin van Helden, You Don't Know Me. So simply just drag it in. And the beauty of Serato Studio is you'll notice up on the top, as I drag it in, it's automatically detuned this, um, this song by minus three semitones. Sorry, plus three semitones, um, which you can see here. And that's basically synced the key to the closest match to our master key of the master project. So now I don't have to worry about pulling tracks in that don't theoretically mix in key because Serato Studio is going to match them for me and I can just pick parts out of the song and sample them, which is great. Let's go back to song view. And I don't want to add too much of this song in there. Let's delete it out first. And I'm going to delete this first cue point. And I just want to add a little hint of it so people maybe recognize it. And again, if I were just if I was doing this live as a DJ, it, I'd need three decks and then I need to have samples all loaded already and it can just disrupt the flow of your mixing. The ideas are all there, we just pre-program them. So I'm going to go, there's a really cool um, riff just before the drop. Let's have a listen. 
And that's what I want. So this time, instead of setting any slices or endless loops, I'm just going to set um, some cue points myself. So I'm not going to do slicer or endless slicer. I'm just going to drag it to the point that I want. Set up number one. So that's the main thing I want. I might set up some on the halfway point. And then here as well, because I'm not sure exactly which part I want yet. So I've got all of it. And I can chop those three down. Now it's as simple as I could just simply drag drag these down but I want to listen to the track first and think about what do I want to sample where I think it might be quite nice to layer it under after the tracks dropped in under the lick it vocal so I'm going to drag in clip number two down here just for that back end of the sample So it's just a hint at it. Remember, we need to truncate this. So I'm going to go to the end of the waveform, drag it all the way back, just so it highlights my sample. And again, zooming in and out, just to check it. Let's have a listen. Lick it, lick it down, down. Nice. And then as simple as option, duplicate, option, duplicate. And then I could do it again towards the end. Option, duplicate, duplicate, and duplicate. And it's simple and quick as that. Let's have another listen. I could then think about lick it, lick it down, down. being careful about how many, once I start layering lots of audio together, how many frequencies might be clashing with each other. So you could do a bit of EQing, just like you would as a DJ, on this sample. So if I click it, make sure I'm on the sample. And here where it says pad 2, I can just make sure that pad 2 doesn't have any low end in. Just drag the low end down, just like a DJ mixer. Lick it, lick it down, down. I could drag a bit of mid down if I wanted to, and you can really experiment with this just to balance it. There we go. And then I could add this as... A potential loop later on but I'm going to leave it just like that for now I've got the option there to build upon this more I'm going to be adding effects in a future lesson to these samples so that they don't sound as harsh when they come in and out but all I want to get across there is you can really quickly just start building audio on top of each other and layering it together to make it sound way more unique and straight away we've created a DJ edit that we could happily play in our sets and it's got three different pieces of audio there all working together. The last thing I want to do is create a unique chop. So rather than using the lick it vocal that's presented to us, I want to do something just over this breakdown here. And this is where I'm going to take the same acapella but create a sample out of it. So in our scenes, all I need to do is create a new sample pad. So add a sample here and then drop lick it acapella again into the empty sample slot. And it will try to find some samples for us. Let's have a listen. Take it I quite like that down. So we've got lick it and we've got down. Quite like that down. Cool, so number four. Now, I just want to highlight something else here. If you do happen to have something like a Serato DJ controller, like I have here, the Pioneer DDJ SB3. You can plug this directly into your laptop and straight away, because it's a Serato controller, you can use things like the pads and the knobs to automate the effects, which we'll look at in a later lesson, but the pads to actually start playing with samples like this. And we can use the controller as a tactile pad to play around with the audio. So that's just a really cool, cool tip. Now, obviously, if you don't have a controller or a MIDI controller, you don't, you don't need to worry about that. You can just use, as we have been doing, the keyboard on your laptop or just the mouse to click and play. So all I want to do here is add in a little vocal chop. 
and I'm going to add it in over this breakdown. And I want something like... Something like that. So first let's record it into our scene. I'm going to make it two bars long and let's put the metronome on. Okay, so let's record something in. Number four or pad four on my controller and then I'm going to record something. Cool, I'm happy with that. I'm just going to extend that first one slightly. And if I wanted to add something else in there, I could test out the different samples. Quite like the lick it. So let's overdub it. What that means is we hit the record button again, it will play down, down to down. And I'm going to just add lick it on the end. There we go. And simply drag and drop it down over our breakdown. And we'll duplicate that just for where there's a bit of space in the music here. That sounds great. The lick it is quite harsh at the moment, so as a DJ I would want to maybe filter that down. And again, it's as simple as, let's click on the pad here. That's our lick it. And if you notice on the left hand side, we can change the EQs and the filter and the level, all of that individual sample. So I could bring the filter down slightly. Maybe not as much as that. Cool. As you can see, I can do it on the controller as well. I'm moving the filter on the left hand channel of the controller and you can really test it with that. And maybe take the low end out as well. Cool. Let's listen again. Let me turn the metronome off. Cool, so I could roll with something like that. And you can really experiment with this and start doing your own samples. But straight away, we can work with big pieces of audio. As you can see, I've just dragged and dropped clips down of the Lick It acapella. Or I can go really intricate and cut up the sample and EQ it and add some filters all just to the Lick It sample within a scene as well. So there are two options there. I would say if you want extended pieces of audio, just have it as an audio track. If you want to start chopping it up loads, add it as a sample into a scene and then use your sample pads here to cut it up and find different samples. So we're going to leave it at that position. We could export it at this point by clicking on master and going export song and naming it. We're going to be adding more to this song in the next lesson, so follow along with this series and you'll see how we can clean this up way more, even add more into it and really make it our own DJ edit and DJ mashup. And there you have it. You can see just how simple it is to start sandwiching pieces of audio together and have lots of different tracks working at the same time. I bet you've got lots of ideas running through your head right now where you've been playing on your DJ equipment and figuring out that, okay, this acapella works over this instrumental, but you can do way more than that. You can chop it up, you can create samples, you can really work with those audio sources using a piece of software like Serato Studio. So if you haven't already, click the link in the description, download the full version by entering the code Crossfader. You get two months free with that code and you can follow along with the next two videos in this series where we're going to be using the same project and really building it out. We're going to add lots more into this project and really harness the full power of Serato Studio. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.